Greetings and welcome, Epic Radio, don't know love alone. Can you hear us? give thanks. I really, really love you. I give thanks. Give thanks. Give thanks. Yes, I. Greetings. to the Real Vice Radio Show family. How are you doing, brother man? <laughs> I'm doing great. Give thanks. Give thanks, you know? How oh, are the item? How oh, are you, yeah, brother? We Flip. good. We full join the day you don't know, love. I like always when it comes to the Real Vice Radio Show where Akebel and Empress Sound is nothing but love alone, man. Positive vibe. 
Jessie Greetings. Jones. It's a pleasure to have you on here. Oh my gosh, I am so excited. We have the one and only Owen Juggler Nibs on Real Vibes Radio. And to the I and family, give thanks for giving us the opportunity on Real Vibes Radio. I am honored, you know. <laughs> so, Owen, you know what? At this time, I just want you to tell the viewers about you because I remember when we did the pre interview, you said something that had me thinking about it every day. You said something about 30 years. I'm not going to give it away, but I definitely want you to talk about your music career. When did you start? Um, creating music. How old were you? Did you come from a family of music? I want to hear everything about you, Owen. <laughs> well, Owen Nibs was born um, in Montego Bay, a little era called um, Mount Salem. And I grew up in another era in St. James called Salt Spring, you know. Grew up with my mother and um, I have like 10 brothers, three sisters, you know? So it was a, a large family. And my mother now was a musical lady, you know? And my mother, you know, in Jamaica now, Saturday morning, is the radio playing, all the neighbors playing the radio, uh, and, and the sound systems, you know what I mean? So my mother now, she used to host parties like probably every month inside the yard, you know? So in the 70s, I could remember some systems stringing up in the yard and, you know, those the vibes, the vinyl, the turntable, the tube arms, the microphone. As a seven-year-old youth, I was fascinated by that, you know? And then my mother now, she have a stash of seven and she have a little turntable, you know? So, I guess at the time she needed a selector. So as a younger one now, you know, as a little child, you probably get beat every day. Because, you know, you would, one of the rules is you're not supposed to leave the yard and go over the next street. So, me and my friend then would go over there, play marble and stuff. So, my mother now, she never beat me. Her punishment was for me to play music for her. Because she, what she a know that punishment. I, <laughs> so, I didn't like it. So I would actually be crying and playing the music because you want to be outside with your friends and playing. Right, so I my friends, and, yeah, my friends and used to come out the way and laugh at me because I can't come outside. Because she would be relaxing, smoking a little spliff while me, I cry, I play music. But there was a song that came out 19, I think, 74 by Tinga Stewart. It was a festival song named Play the Music. Play the music. Play, play the, the music. music. Jump like Jump melody. Like, <laughs> uh, so for some reason, that was the only music I like. So I get to learn it. And then I start to enjoy playing it now. And then I perform the song at a... You know, community concert where they were giving away prizes, Korean books and stuff to go back to school, you know. And I went and sang it, get a big applause. And that's where the journey started for me. You know? Oh, wow. Yes. What, yes. what a history. I mean, to have the opportunity... At, you, you used the term punishment back back in the days. I get it. You know, you want to be outside playing marbles with your friends yeah. and your mother telling you, well, this is what you have to do. You talked about Tinga Stewart. From that time when you listened to the song, did you find yourself following him or listening to more of his tunes because you liked that particular one? No. Uh, all right, 74, and then... Let's say 12th grade going into secondary school. It was the 80s now. So the 80s would bring the roots, robot of artists like you would hear on the radio. Cause at the time, the music I was getting used to was what's playing on the radio. So it, was, it would be like Barrington Levy, Tristan Palmer, Michael Palmer, you know, 
them type of Johnny Osborne, the first people who hit the chart. So I was more sugar minded. So I was more, you know, to the roots now. You know, the heavy bass line. Then going into party you now as a young youth, even next door, you would be listening to the music. You can't go into the party, you would be next door listening to the music, you know? You would hear Sammy Dreadlocks, you would hear Yellow Man, Ty, and Lico John, and it was just sweet rubber dog. So I was more listening to Roots, you know? Okay, you were more listening to Roots. And would you say growing up at that time, you're being forced to play music, and then as you develop, you're listening to the roots. When do you think you really started to appreciate love? You know, the music, like how old do you think you were at that time? Like I said, I, I believe it was um, around 12 years old. Okay. Because the secondary school now, where you have school concert. So my friends, them know, if, if, if there's a school concert coming up, they would, you know, encourage you to enter, go put down your name to go on the show. So I would perform like Lico John Sang, Michael Palmer, and Tristan Palmer. Those were the three artists I, I would emulate. They, they were more like my, my idol, you know? So that's when I really start to, to perform. And then in my era now, you know, sound system, I, the bigger man I would bring I, to the sound system and say, give the youth the mic. And it was just, it was not that, that moment, you know? Yeah, do you think there's a difference of the vibe and the love doing music from when you were during that era to now? Do you think there's a difference? And if so, what is that difference? I think the difference, this is my opinion. Yes, your opinion. Is that it was more natural. It was more natural. And you could hear from other established artists from them time there. They would tell you they do albums, 45s, without even going in there and say, boy, I'm going to make some money. I'm doing it because when I do it, I'm going to get a thousand dollar. Some of them don't even get no money. They just went in their hungry belly and just record because it was inside of them. So it have to come out without thinking of, and probably some have regret that they didn't know about the business so the difference i believe now and then it was more of a natural thing you know yeah more natural more authentic and from what i've learned many of them did not seek financial gains from it as you mentioned it was because of the love them sharing all the, the the lyrics and on the thoughts and the messages that were in their brain and be able to get it out in music. And then when you think about studio, rock steady, lovers rock, those type of rhythms that were created back in the days, it was like, of course you had to go and sing. What else were you supposed to do, you know? You're doing this for yeah. the love and you're doing this for the connection with people because I'm pretty sure when your friends and them were telling you to go on stage, I'm pretty sure there was a particular vibe that you were getting as an encourager and encouragement from your friends, correct? Yeah, because now you start to get the attention. You know, as a 13 year old, you come on the street and say, Yeah, my singer that. <laughs> right, 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 right. In school, you know, the girls them love me because the girls them are, you know, you get popular. I was popular through, you know, school, through high school, sec secondary school. When you say I, I, I was going as Ista. I died. I was little Ista. Ista. Yeah, I have a bigger brother, Ista. Lad. As I said, I have ten bigger brothers, so he was the eldest. So he was the one who I, you know, idolized as my bigger brother. He was like a father figure, you know. Oh, lovely! Is 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 your brother still with us? Hail him uh, up. He, no, he passed some uh, years ago, you know. What's his name? Um, like I said, Ista is his alias, but he's, um, I only thing is now, he, I was called Granville, Granville Grant. <laughs> yes, well, Ista, you know, just sing, sing, saying love and light to your family. And the name Ista, when you, when you ended up getting the name, um, did that put you on a different scene at that time also? Yeah, because, all right, in his community, he was well known. It's a place called Canterbury in Montego Bay. It's the biggest, the biggest ghetto area. 
So he was like one of the elder there, you know? So when I used to go over there and, you know, like the people would be like, little Eister, you know, as a little 13 year old, you feel empowered, you know what I mean? So the name alone empowered me, you know? Yes. And it was the only yes. time I could go around and smoke herb at 14, 15. You know, my mother wouldn't like me. When my mother heard that I went over his house, she would get mad, like, don't go over his house because, you know, he's, a, he's, a, he's like a rebel. He have his sound system. He might have him chalice. He might have him rasta bridge in him. So I would I love to go there every day after school. I could get free herb. You know what I mean? <laughs> so talk about sound system. Were you ever involved in the sound system? And if you were, give us a history of what that looked like at that time, please. All right. All right. Montego Bay, you know, because you know, most of what you heard about is like Kingston, you know? So Mobe is like on the other side of the island now. So for me, there was a sound, there was a, a bridge in used to go to school. He was two years older than I. He was the first selector who introduced to his sound named Liberty Sound. So I would go up there after school and sing on the sound. So I would be in the dance in my khaki suit. At the time, in school, I was going as a duo. It was me and another bridging. So it was Little Eister and Billy Dread. You know? So with Liberty Sound now, that was the first song. Yeah, the most popular song for a month ago be Pick a Mute. And um, I used to spar you now with an older DJ the night from my era named Ja Brown. So he would bring me to dances like more in the the rural, the hills era, because he have dances like every week. So there was a song called Ghetto International. I, I wasn't really based on a song. I was singing a different song. My friend, my classmate, you know, he had a song, he had a power song. I used to sing that song. Letra Force, Kangal song. I used to sing on Kangal song, you know? But one of my most Memorial, memorable experience was um, a bridge of mine in class, 10th grade now, so I was probably 16. His elder brother keep a dance with a song named Ghetto International with Early B, brought back, and it was supposed to be Mama Nancy, but she didn't care. It was a sister named Mama Struggle. So I was in the dance, me and my friend. Billy Dread in our khaki suit because the dance was a Saturday night, but I couldn't go home the Friday to go to the dance on Saturday. Because when I go home on a Friday, my mother always hide my little one shoes. Yeah, because she knew me. <laughs> because she knew you were going to go out and she's like, nope, you need to stay home. Stay home. Yeah, she knew me. I'm going to go somewhere. So I said, we can't go home because mama go hide the shoes. So we, I stay at one of my big I have you know, my bigger brothers them live all over town. So I would stay at one of them house and go to the dance on the night. So while I was there with Early B, you know, Early B, this big superstar, got this itch tune, one, one, really, 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 one wheel. That was an honor for me, man. Oh, nice. So in the morning when the dance was finished, he said to I, you, man, if you come a town with me, you know. So he want me to bring me to Kingston to with him. What was your thoughts at that time when he told you this? I was ready. <laughs> but yeah. early B, as a as a Rasta man, he, he was very disciplined. He told me I, I have to go ask my mother. So that was that this was Sunday morning, you know, uh -oh. you know dance with in the morning. So I was so I tell him, no, me no need to ask my mother, man. Me ready. So he said, no man. Because he had another dance in Montego Bay the Sunday night. So he said, ask your mother if she say yes. Come meet her. He said, don't lie. The problem now, when I was going home Sunday morning, my mother was on her way to church. So imagine me now, see my mother at the bus stop and mama. Blah, DJ won't bring me a Kingston. You know, that mother, was not happening at all. <laughs> <laughs> but I still pack a bag. I went down to the dance. 
And he said, I said, he said, what your mother said. I said, no, but I'm coming. He was like, no, you, when you graduate, I'll come back for you. Oh. <laughs> yeah, man. I always respect early B to be very, even though I was really mad at him, like, man, me, me, me no need my man permission. Me a big man. He was like, no, you listen to your parents. Wow. <laughs> so I know <laughs> you appreciate love him for Iva <laughs> from that ex experience. Oh, that's for really I, nice. I, I, no, I would be in good hands. I would be among superstars. You know, I would be amongst broke back at the time. No, he was with Super Cat. I didn't know at the time, but knowing the history, no, he was, you know, around that that era. So I would be right in the mix. Right, right. Oh, what an honor. Um, you know what I want to do? I want to feature one of your songs, and I just want you to give us a little background story on it as we feature it, so the world could hear. Okay. Okay. Yes, no problem. Don't have love, Owen, juggler nymphs. It's gonna be in vain. Yeah, yeah. And if you don't have love, you're gonna burn in flame. You could have prayed every day, it's gonna be in vain. That is worthy to be praised. But man, they have lost their faith. In the heart of a man, all they do is give a blame. There's no respect for the other man. We keep don't know what life is worth. They only want to destroy the search. Oh, Jack, I know. If you don't have love, you're gonna burn in the flame. You could have prayed every day, it's gonna be. All right, all right. We are here with Owen Jucklin Nibs, and we're learning everything about him. So tell us about this track, how you came up with this, and why. Well, this track, as you know, is a title track from my LP released last year. It was produced by um, Explorer Music. And the music was played by Montreal from out of um, Europe. Um, this song is an inspiration from an event in Paris. There was a, when I, I'm in Paris, I and my virgin Eric, we was gonna go to this um, restaurant, an Ital restaurant and eat, you know? And while I was home, he called me and told me that there was a bombing at the restaurant. And um, a lot of people died, you know? So he sent me the beat and he said, juggler, in honor of, you know, just, Write a song about what you feel about the city, you know? So I, I wrote the song and said, those people who do that, they must be hating. They must, their heart is full of so much hate. They want to kill people like that, innocent people, you know? I wrote the song because if you don't have love, you have burned in a True, 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 yeah. true. Um, love is what guides all of I and I and, and helps us with unity and helps us be focused and togetherness, right? And when people do destruction, it's not, it's not a good thing, of course. So I give thanks that you're able to see some of the current events that were happening and turn it into something that I and I could listen to and, and, and keep an I and I heart. Give thanks. Sure. Yeah, man, it's human connection, huh? yes. love. 
Yeah. It's what we need right now. And I mean, it's overlooked because people say, everybody come talking about love, love, love. So, you know, every artist probably come love, love, love. So people overlook it, like whatever. But it's all we need. And it's, it's not expensive. It's cheap, priceless. It's free. It is. No one, but most people don't give it, especially in the most important area to prevent the war, the killing, the hatred, the grudge, the malice. Just look at another man and feel like, yo, I want to do him so because a man by drive, yo. And if he says, sorry, boss, you feel like that is enough. I'm going to drive him down and take him out. There's so much hatred amongst people, you know, son. And then if we just love, man, it would be such a beautiful world for us, our children, and our children, children, you know what I mean? So... Yeah, that's what it's about. Yeah, when you said our children, children, just making sure that we are setting an example of positivity and continue to spread that love for all of I and I. Yes. It's the only way. All they do is they There's no respect for the other man. So I have a question. Have you ever considered or have made any other music besides reggae? Um, not yet. <laughs> not yet. Not yet. Uh, I'm so, the thing is, I'm probably playing catching up, not singing for 32 years. And in my head, I'm saying, it's like I have to go back into the foundation to come forward, meaning all of these songs I should have been recorded from 1987 because my first recording was 1987 and it was only one song, you know? So all of these songs were inside of me, which I didn't know until I started to sing again in 2015. So that's 32 years of blank, you know? Yes, so... I'm not venturing to other genre yet, genre yet, you know? Yes, at, at some point you will. So you said 1987 was your first recording. What was the name? I'm so sorry, I should have asked you that from before so I could have played it. <laughs> that song called Juggler. Oh, oh, okay, okay, okay. Juggler is what caused so much, I would say, all right, I describe myself, I feel like a volcano. So I feel like I'm, I'm erupting now with all the, the energy compressed from 1987 to 2015. You know what I mean? Because after recording Juggler, Juggler, that song I, I was written in school, 10th grade. And um, I recorded 1987. But what happened is now the Bridge you know, producer song, we were bridging. From we grew up together. He was the one who brought me to Kingston as a youth, you know. And he went into production, bought his six them time it was vinyl, bought a 16 track, a two track. Uh, pay for the rhythm. We went to Aquarius student halfway tree, recorded the song, he pressed the songs, but he gave it to a distributor now to put the song in the record shops. Because he was so young, I was so young, he gave the impression that the song was no good. And he was he was giving such so we used to go to the the, the complex and the gate man they wouldn't let us in like the boss not there here you know them, them real them thing they going like them a bad man and so my friend he got a little discouraged and at the time he migrated to America right in that confusion and he was the only one I knew in Kingston because people wonder why it's the only song I recorded how comes one song so I went back to Montego Bay. And then Montego B at the time didn't have studio to record it, you know? So the juggler now, I never stopped music, but I stopped recording. I was still doing the sound system, still going to dances. And at one point now, I kind of stray away and start to promote parties. Let's say I do everything in music except recording. So it was after... 
social media came in now, like Facebook and all them things. I was on the radio like you playing music. What? I had so you was a selector? I was the best, not a selector. I was the <laughs> best, the best with, with your Yeah, I have a song in New York called Ice the Movements. Ice the Movements. <laughs> yeah, man. I would have CDs, mixed cassettes. I have a little following around the Bronx here, around um, the Pillam Parkway to Alatan to Boston Road, 241st, Mount Vernon. So I have my little thing I'm going, you know? And then I moved to Connecticut now. Then I meet a bridge in name Jamaica. So we went on the radio you now. I was playing the music. He was doing the talking. So I created a Facebook to connect. I didn't like it at first, you know, because I seem like very public and I, I'm a quiet little man, you know. So I was encouraged <laughs> to do a Facebook. And this is where my life was interrupted by this juggler thing. Someone came on the messenger and said, type and said, is this Owen Nibs who sang the juggler? Remember, that's 32 years gone. I said, juggler, why am I talking? So I, I replied, <laughs> I replied and said, yes, but it wasn't released. In type back and yes, it was released in Europe. So I type again and I said no. So he said, okay, send me a number. So he called me. So he's telling me on the phone, or like, yeah, Joga was released in Europe, and we've been looking for you from then till now. Oh my. I said, no. So I didn't believe him. I thought it was a scam. Cause he was getting excited. Whoa, I'm talking to the juggler. You're a bitch. <laughs> He bonged, get excited, of course. He had Owen juggler nibs, you know, come on. <laughs> yeah, man was talking in, at the time I didn't use the French, and man was talking in English and some different language. So I said, I wonder if I want my bridge and I try, you know, play with my bridge. Because it was my birthday too. So I'm like, I wonder if I want my bridge. And... So I hung up on him. I hung up and said, what is man a disturbing for man? So I called back and said, juggler. You got to understand I'm serious. So he said, all right, I should Google my name. Remember, I have no reason to Google Owen Nibs, God. I, I don't even like the name Nibs. That's another story. <laughs> That's, That's, fine. That's fine. That's fine. Yeah. So anyway, he said, Google Owen Nibs and I'll call you back. God, this man was serious. He's not giving up. So I went on Google and I didn't even know if you Google. I <laughs> asked somebody, so I Google Owen Nibs. When I look, I see the song. I said, what? Then I see, you know, Google, you have different pages and comments. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I see comments like, Cause what happened is, because the song was recorded from 1987 in Europe, it become a collector's. So a 45 in Europe is for 9 euro, 10 euro. This one is for 250 euro. Wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Owen... So when you realize what was going on at that moment, what did you say to yourself? I call him on right up. <laughs> I, I said, because no, I could, like, all right. I would see a comment said, I am Ray Ray from Moscow, just bought Owen Nibs 45 for 200 euro money well spent. I'm saying, what? I see where is the where is Owen Nibs? I see I'm a fan of him. Does he have more music? Then I went on YouTube now and I see the song playing. What? Like, what? People commenting want to know about me. So I, when I call him back, he said, Did you see it? I said, Yeah. So I said, What's going on? So what he wanted to do was repress it to re-release it now. Because since people are buying it for 200 euro obviously people would buy it for 10 euro so i didn't know you could press music from music i think you have to have a master and stuff like that he said no this technology so he said all right there's a lot of people looking for me right now so he wanted a contract so the man sent me money same time 
I went to the restaurant in an half an hour for money. Wow, Owen. Wow. Because he, tomorrow somebody's going to find me. So he said, all right. He's going to press the record. Because in Europe, they still play record, you know? And I should wait, you know, a couple of months. So 2015, around March, he called me again and said, you got the records. He's going to mail me a few copies. So I said, okay. He said, when I receive the copies, you should tell him. So when I called him and said, I got the copies, he said, all right. You want me to do a video? You know, saying, hey, I'm Owen Nibs, the juggler. And hold the record and said, this record is available at jamwax.com. And got to be at, I'm singing, I didn't even want to sing because I didn't sing for 32 years. So I tell him I'm not going to do it. Because I don't want to come on the scene about no juggler thing. I don't want to hear about no juggler. You know what I mean? Just take the music and go and leave me alone. Are you, are you so serious? serious? Yeah, because I, I didn't have, I'm a selector. I'm bad, I'm good. Oh yeah, you were the best, you were the best selector at that time at time i have no plate I, i'm i'm killing it <laughs> so this man is disturbing my frequency <laughs> yes, <right>? yes. <laughs> so anyway he said nobody gonna support the project because in europe you could take a record press it bootleg it you can't put the original label but you could put a white label and write the music so he said if i don't endorse it people gonna think he just took the record and do it which the song is so respected nobody want to touch it so I said, I'll do it. What I got to lose? So I, I did the video and he posted it on his page. Then people start contacting me now from Germany, Japan. Hey, Mr. Nibs, welcome back. Hey, Mr. Nibs, where were you? I have your song. I'm playing it. People want the dub, dub play it now. Wow. So did, I said, did it feel real at that point or, or were you still? Why this man messing up, mess <laughs> like, what was happening with you at that point? Uh, at that point, I was mad. No, all right. <laughs> you cannot be mad and sad at the same time. That's a serious emotion. I was happy about, you know, the juggler, the money, <laughs> at least. But then I was mad that somebody took our record and bring it overseas and tell us the song is no good, nobody buying it. False, false so, information, yeah, false. Yeah. yeah, so I was in in some deep stress because I said my life could have been different because I was really into music at the time. I was I was really serious as a night car. I recorded the song 19 years old. We had plans. It's a company. I'm the only artist in the company. We're gonna make music, we're gonna make albums. So thinking about that now, I'm like, I'm very upset right now. But then I'm happy that Juggler is here. But the problem now is I have to go sing again. So the first dub plate I did was a song in Norway named Lambsbread. They sent me money quick and said, Juggler, we want to be the first one to play it. So I had a bridge named Diamond Mine now, who I used to follow an artist named Far into his studio. And watch him record and sit there and say, Whoa, how him do that? That's a magic. <laughs> and we grow together. So he was always telling me, Yo, you are the original artist, man. You have to come do it. I said, No, brother. Nah, I do that. I didn't like singing. You know what I mean? You didn't like to so, sing. No, because I, so Diamond Man, you know, he helped me do the dub plate. Do the dub plate tomorrow again, a song from Japan. The next day, a song for so Europe, because the song was very popular in Europe, Japan, all over that place. In about a month, I see a man named Eric Black Catalog contact me and say, Hey, juggler, welcome back. Has anyone invited you to Europe? I said, For what? He was like, Are you, <laughs> Are you serious? That's the first thing that you said. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm not into no singing thing. <laughs> So I thought the man was going, going to hire me to play. I play me, I don't want to sing, I want to play music. So the man said, no, not to play. I'm giving you, I want you to come for two months. I want to give you two months tour. So I said, how is that going to happen? I only got one song. I never forget, he said to me, people have albums. 
and nobody is interested. You people are interested. Just don't worry about the one song. Just come to Europe. We will figure that out. So I said, okay. And at the time now, I have my family. You know, I have my two youngest kids with me. I have a, a married empress. So everything was set. Now this thing is an interruption. Okay, I'm going to have to tell my empress now, like, look, she didn't know about no song. She didn't, I didn't tell her I used to sing. I tell nobody who know me after, you know, you, you have to grow with me to know I, I did a song. That's not something I talk about. I want to get that out of my past. So when I have to go to her and say, hey, I'm going to Europe for eight weeks, it, it didn't go very well. <laughs> oh, my. Oh, my. Yeah. So anyway, I, I'm compelled to go. I went, land in Paris. They have a welcome party. Please ram up. It was surreal still, huh? It was it surreal still at that time? <laughs> I, mean, I, was like, I, I was like a dream. You see? And Euro people, they are really into the roots and they love artists, you know? And I was treated like a king. People would come up to me, thank you, Juggler, for the song. Because the song is about working, hustling, doing three jobs. Don't sit around and love. People coming up to me and tell me they got two jobs because of the song. So for eight weeks now, I'm in um, Paris, Germany, Netherlands, Portugal, Spain, all over the place with this one song. Not the big venue, you know, but a nice little bar, little club. But I have people coming. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's what's up. Um, yes. You want to know what? Got to be a juggler, juggler, messing at the side. Got to be a hustler, hustler. You can't be no loser. I got to be a juggler, juggler, juggler. Hey, in a this time. I know you, you, you didn't think I had it, huh? Got to be a juggler, 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 hey, in a this time, yeah. Boy, got to be a hustler, 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 hey, can't be no loader. I, eh, can't get no work, no say in your factory. Everywhere me go, there is no vacancy, hey. Never that on JP than a country. Get the salon and plant of the country. When me read that, me say that of currency, hey. Set up a wife and hungry pit me. We a juggle, a juggle, a juggle, a hey. In a this a time, yeah. Boy, got to be a hustler, 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 hey. Can't be no longer.
Well, that's a trouble for no man's shoulder. Hey, defend yourself, I got moving soldier. Can't get so red, I miss it, can't get so jed. Youths and youths, I feel work for them bread. Juggle, a juggle, a juggle, a hey, in a disatina. Serious, serious, serious tune, juggler. Yeah. I thought that in my car is too, you know. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> oh wow, wow. So what a what a journey you, uh, I guess, where it started when you when they um, asked you to come over there, and then you see how many people was interested in you. You see how many people had your music. Um, at what point did it really start feeling like, wow, yes, I can do something more with this. I can expand on it. At what point? Well, it was, it was that moment when, because um, you see, it's the it's the energy you get from the people. Cause you don't do music for yourself, you know. It's like a, it's a service. So while I was there, you now I was trying to um, to, to to understand. What's going on? And it was like I go different places and people have different things to say to me. You know, like one night I was at a dance. It was in South Paris, South France, a little town, you know. So while I was there, performed on, and, and um, we were inside, you know, like the because we were supposed to stay with the promoter, you know. So while he was there, certain people was inside talking. So I see this guy running down the street and they, they let him inside. So I know he was familiar with um, the people, but he just stand there looking at me, you know? So in my, sometime I forget that I'm an artist at the time. So, you know, you know, you Jamaica bad man style, like, oh, I'm on the look for Mr. Star. So anyway, in no time when I looked, the man was right beside me. So he said to me, hi, juggler. So I said, respect. So he said to me, I apologize. So I said, for what? He said, I didn't make your concert on time. So I said, no, man, that's cool, man. He said, no, it's not, man. I apologize. He said he, he tried to get somebody to change a shift. So he was telling me, you know, because of the song, he got three jobs. So I'm looking at him like this man is a madman. Because like I said, I forget that. Um, You're still um, in disbelief. You're still in uh, disbelief. I, I, even Eric Black Catalog, sometimes I have to draw me one side and say, hey, you have to conduct yourself a little more better because you don't, you don't understand what's going on. Because he would see that I'm confused. So anyway, he said to me, he would pay me, you know, if you pay the select, uh, pay me for him to turn on about the sound, for me to sing one song for him. So I, I said, are you serious? I said, why? I said, just listen to music. He said, no, juggler. And he was serious. So he went, talked to the selector. They turned on back the sound. And I went and sung. And he paid. So that was like, is it that serious? So now, while I was there, Eric would bring me to different studio because there's a lot of musicians in Europe, a lot of studio, a lot of roots band. And I would, you know, try recording. I would, you know, try out some songs. And I realized that songs were coming to me. And most of these songs that's coming to me, I, I would say again, because enough of these songs is probably memories as a youth. And I would sing up, I would say, like, for example, Street Side Soldier. That's a song from when I was a teenager, I have that song. Not the whole thing, but I I have the concept of, in Jamaica at the time, you would have the man them who sit on the corner every day. They don't work. You go to school in the morning, you come back from school, they're still there. But they would have money. They would wear the latest clocks. You know? So I, I come up with the name. I said, them man, there's like street side soldier. And they were, some of them were bad man. You know, so I realized that. So when I came home now, um, Mikey, my partner on the radio, he introduced me to a bridging name, Attorney. I said, Attorney, do music, he have a studio. While I was still you know, working with Diamond Mine at the time, experimenting, testing out in the studio. 
I went to some vice lesson. But it was a challenge now to say, okay, I'm going to record. I remember now, I'm a family man. And I have a partner who wasn't into music, didn't make me as no singer. He was comfortable. I go to work, come home, cook. Because I'm, you know, I'm a chef. I do all the cooking and perfect settings. Now, I'm a student when I'm supposed to be home. So it, it was, it, it, it was, it come to a time now when, you know, we had a meeting. Because, look. Compromising. Compromising. Yeah, it's like, yo, from you come from Europe, you know, you don't touch me. What are going on? Because the music now is coming, force is coming hard. So we had a meeting and, you know, we have to separate because it's not intentional to say I choose music or that, but it's like it's, it, it was ardent to be, and I, oh, you know. Oh my, wow. wow. Yeah, we, we separate at a, a place. But, you know, my, my youth, I'm still connected. Cause one thing my son said to me, he was probably 13 at the time. He said, Daddy, as long as you don't go too far. My daughter at the time, you know, she couldn't comprehend what was going on. So she was more crying and stuff. But I... I I was compelled. I wouldn't be happy. I have to go do the music. And so I went through some voice training. And then now, I have time now to settle down. So that's when I start to write music. Different producer from Europe starts sending me beats. Then I went back to Europe, 2017, 2018. I didn't go through the pandemic. So I went there last year promoting the LP. So. I recorded about 40 something singles from 2016 until today, probably 50. Yep. Whoa, na, 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 na. Oh, Lord. You can't be no love that. Yeah. You can't be no street side soldier. Street side soldier. Oh, and that. You got to be a juggler. Can loaf around, begin a dollar or a pound. Yeah, we all got work to do to make our dream come true. Yeah, it's a hard, it's a hard, it's a hard, but you can't see the night you're young now. It's a hard, it's a hard, it's a hard, it's a hard. But you can't see the guy you're young now. And when you rise up in the morning, man, I feel go on the juggling. With that, whoa, na, 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 na. Oh, Lord. You can't be no love star. Yeah. You can't be no street side soldier. You have to be a hustler. You can't be no street side soldier. You got to be a juggler. Can loaf around, begin a dollar or a pound. Yeah, we all got work to do to make our dream come true. Yeah, it's a hard, it's a hard, it's a hard, it's a hard. But you can't see the guy you're young now. It's a hard, it's a hard, it's a hard, it's a hard. But you can't see the guy you're young now. And when you rise up in the morning, man, I feel go up on the juggling. Whether it's a flat foot hustling or it's just a boss man thing. Oh, can't look from the corner. Even though it rough, I don't know yeah, yeah. Oh, ah. Yeah, I see don't gonna wonder. We have to make a move for the paper boy. You can't be no street side soldier. You have to be a hustler. You can't be no street side soldier. You got to be a juggler. Can loaf around, begin a dollar or a pound. Yeah. We all got work to do to make. Our dream come true, yeah. Can't depend on no government. I 
have to seek some self You hear that? Can't depend on the government. Music we enjoy. Oh. Music. <laughs> Promoter dancing at the resident. Street. Side. Soldier. The cat man, I sell him jelly water, the conductor, the street sweeper, all of them, I also feel the paper, time rough, sir, time tough, sir, I be juggle that we can't give up now, but if you keep on try and try, one day you must get by, you can't be no street side soldier, you have to be a hustler. You can't be no street side soldier. You got to be a juggler. Can loaf around. Begin the dollar or a pound. Yeah. We all got work to do to make our dream come true. Yeah. Oh, ah, eh, ah. You can't be no loafer. Oh, ah, eh, ah. It's Yes, yes. One thing I got to say, you know, music is life, life is music is love. And I'm so grateful. Like, even though you are the baddest DJ, you still, you know. <laughs> did your thing with your music because this music is, is pure vibes, man. Love, man. It's to the heart, to the core. You know, if you're not feeling it, then I don't know, man. You don't, probably don't have a heart, but man, them lyrics are everything, man. Give thanks. <laughs> yeah. We all got work to do to make our dream come true, yeah. Yes, yes, yes. yes. Give thanks, give thanks. So... Listen to this. Who is gonna sing for the poor? Yeah. But Molly is not there no more. Oh, yeah. Who is gonna sing for the poor? Peter Touch is not there no more. Yeah. Who is gonna speak for the voiceless? Reggae. Jacob Miller is Need not more no warriors. Oh, well, yeah. Who will stand up for the people? Loki Dube is not there no more. Ah, ah. All right, all right, all right. So you don't know, you got to tell us a history of this one, please. This one, the first, I want to find my girl somewhere. I need business, so, you know? Um, for me, as an 80s child who grew up listening to Sugar Minot and Delgado and Hugh Mundell and Bob Marley, Peter Tosh, I think if I remember music was like spoken words for the for the voiceless, you know? Every song don't have to be that, you know what I mean? But to me, reggae music, I could remember a song like Everywhere You Go, It's the Same Cry, Money Worries. Money Worries. Yeah, and even as a youth, you know, times together to buy necessities, you understand the song, even as a little bit of food, when mama said, I can't go to school today because I'm going to have no house to pay our lunch money. I understand that you can mother and your neighbors and the world. So to see now, we don't really have them type of music there. Really, I speak for the people. Because now this music might not be the most popular music, you know? So I have to cry out now and said, you know, the few that leave who I mentioned, and there's more too. But you know, a song can't hold everybody near, like Lucian, a Sizzler, as the more modern roots. Like I'm saying, after them gone, I mean, you still have some younger one now coming up. But you know, we just want the music to, to really get back to its main purpose, especially roots rock reggae, where, you know, it was more inspiring, the lyrics. The artist himself was a rebel. We love rebel artists, Jacob Miller, the man there. You know, see them on the pants. You know, so that's what the song is saying about 
reggae need more warriors you know too much pop star you know what i mean so that's what the song is about i just wrote the song you know how i feel you know yeah give thanks oh, yeah. give thanks give thanks i'm gonna make sure i want people to listen carefully to it all right Thanks. You're welcome. Who is gonna speak for the voiceless? Jacob Miller is not here no more. Well, yeah. Who will stand up for the people? Loki Tube is not here no more. Ah, ah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Reggae need more warriors. Ah, ah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. More freedom fighters. Reggae music is the heartbeat of the people Stop singing about your house and your vehicle Sing song for the people out there now And show them that someone cares someone can. Motivate them to be stronger The big man don't care no longer Mr. Singer with the mic in your hand yeah. With a wire, the rapper, pom pom now nah. Conscious music for your mind and your soul. Come and dear some of the good time rolls. Good music for the people them want. Turn up the rhythm, everyone chant out. Who is gonna sing for the poor? Yeah, sugar mine that is not here no more. No way. Who is gonna sing for the poor? When Harry Brown is not here no more. No way. Who is gonna speak for the voiceless? Dennis Brown is not here no more. Oh yeah, who will defend the people? Dennis is not here no more. Ah ah ah. Yeah. Reggae need more warriors. Ah ah ah. Yeah. Reggae need more warriors. Owen, just like this. Play the music like we're dancing on the street now. Nah. Turn up the reggae, turn up the reggae, turn up the reggae, make like we're dancing on the street now. Nah. Dance out with problem, oh I try to shine, but we can't vibes to no good man song. Say we have vibes to no good man song. The people they don't want no good man song now. Nah. Who is gonna sing for the poor? Yeah. When Sizzler doesn't sing no more. What do them want you and where them come from? I push up them ears like they want this man. Lots of them hard be, but them run street. And them so weak. When them attack, me see air on them teeth. Lots of them hard be, but them run street. Internet, so bad man. When them attack, you see if on them teeth. Boy attack, but them not ready yet. I go and let them a soldier, but them mark a day. Them boy are only bad, say pan the internet. But wait till we hold them with the big entertain. Boxing a face, kick in a chase. Man a foundation, we don't take no chase. Say the big man, have respect. Step out of the way when gangsta a stay. All right, all right, all right. Internet bad man. I, how you come up with this song? Eh? <laughs> you know, this is not even a song. It's a, a dope plate I did for a bridge. He sent, you know, you notice it's a bad man lyrics. A slap up man. And, yes, yes. You know yes, yes. <laughs> so, so, well, right. know? All right. So that's. Play. Yeah, so the, the, the Bridgin sent out the rhythm now. And he said, Juggler, I want you to write a song for this rhythm. But it's not a dub plate where I'm going to call his name. It's a special. Because he, he don't play a dub plate with his name. So he said, just give me a bad man tune. So I call it my Bridgin Attorney you now. And Attorney is my musical partner. He's my, the man I, we, we create together. On the album, he's credited as um, creative director. And um, a Bridgin name, Diamond Mine. So those are the two people I record. So I call him and say, hey, we have a work here. You know? This man want a bad man tune. I am not a bad man. So let me get on to business. So there's an app where he, 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 he's on, where a lot of sound man is on it. No, um, it's on a WhatsApp group. 
So he was telling me how the man them are up on it. It's a conversation. We had the rhythm, you know. But we didn't get to it yet. So we were having a conversation like, he's playing all the other man them are. This the other man them. So this particular guy was like, yo, the whole on internet bad man. Like, they want to say that in front of his face. So I said, play that back. So I said, that's the song. <laughs> so I said, what do you mean? So I said, play the rhythm the side. Like, half them hard beat. But them run street. And we say, yo, let's go into the studio. I will make the dub play. That a song, the special. Send it to the man now. The man put it out. I tell the man, say, yo, that's not really my thing, you know. But he said, no, man, the song bad, man. It's a sound thing. People don't say, you know, really. Slap up a man on the street. It's a selected thing. And it, it, it just, at one point, it's one of our most requested dub plates, you know. I get it. Yeah. I get it. I get it. <laughs> so um, it's not a road boy musical thing like me. I go slap up a man and lock off a man at me. I ain't want to do it, not me. <laughs> right, right, right. <laughs> well, he comes to drink all down so tired. Well, wicked and wild. I turn it upside the man called Mr. Dude. Yeah, yeah. What am I going to start? Put on my clothes, put on my turly now. Hold me down and dance tonight. Yeah. I'm a Chris Hour shirt, me gonna dance tonight. Yeah, yeah. Me say nothing wrong, but him just lose him life. Tonight, him a go mix up in a cup. Dance hall, nice. Crown and rank, I'm gonna shine up in dice. Bartender and a show, the liquor for her eyes. Big sound pull up on a lean and jump. Boxman take it down, then they start stringing it up. For soon, they drop me, send the whole place in up. And tonight, tonight, everyone are roping. Bring for your queen and left your machine. Cause over you Bring your queen and, and left your machine. Rasta and step it in a high school and green. Unity is strength, you see what I mean. Dance all right, so me say dance all sweet. But she had yelled in my boobie for me. Dance all right, so me say dance all sweet. But she rode while the mask can go to street. Dance all right, so me say dance all sweet. But she had yelled in my boobie for me. Dance all night, so me say dance all sweet. Watch your road while the mask can go to the street. Whoa, yeah. Yeah, you know. Whoa, yeah, whoa, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Me say I want turn table and I want mixer. The DJ stand up round the amplifier. It dance through the mic, it come through the speaker. But it sounds sweeter with the echo chamber. So who did you collaborate with this one on? That's the same Brendan Kearney. Really? <laughs> uh, yeah, I like, in the studio every time I work. So sometimes I choose and I say, come in, Brendan. You know, the vibes got... I wrote that song when I was in Paris. Um, foreign records sent I the beat. And he said, hey, you know, do a song for I. And one day I was just thinking about back in the days when man used to dress in them. Because I come from that era, you know, Clarks, the Diamond Sacks. And your know, the bell foot pants and your Irish, just the fashion, the music. I grew up in the stone system. I, I never used to go to movies, just dance and party. So I just go back into that thing and big sound pan truck and bring it back and just, and him say, come in, man. I will just do the song, you know, dance all nice, dance all sweet. And all the beautiful ladies in the dance, so you can beg a dance and rock and come in. You know? <laughs> Rock and come in, yes. yes. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, well. yeah, yeah. Give thanks, give thanks for the I works. Give thanks for your journey, and I, I could just imagine all of the other artists, entertainers that you've met with, you've collaborated with. What what has been those relationships like? It's been great. Um, I've collaborated with um, Doug Zaranks. The DJ did when wifey come out and push to the bone. It is it is, is one of my brethren. I met him at a dance um, a few years before the song and him, him liked the vibes and said, Yo, we can do a tune together. We did a tune called um, Down in Jamaica, where I'm from, where I'm from. And I recorded with um Shine Ed. Yeah, a song, nice big, big song. Still cool. And my latest. And I recorded a bridge in Paris to Edgar Rebel. 
Um, rather go a bed hungry than go jail house. That's on one of my albums. And um, my latest combination is with um, legendary Mr. Michael Palmer, Ghetto Life. And I and him performed the song last weekend for the first time at a dance in Queens, New York. You know, it was a blast to stand up beside my idol. He's, he's one of my inspiration, you know? Right, right. I could just imagine um, the event and the people that came out and just the vibes. But here's what I want to do since you mentioned you and Doug Z Ranks. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Down in Jamaica, say where I'm from. Beautiful beaches and pretty white sand. Tourists in the sun to get them tan. Out of many, say we are one. Let's unite for this great nation. Pull up your and you are born Jamaica. Oh, oh, oh. I have traveled all over this world. Long to me like Jamaican girls. Where I'm from, I just saw Mr. Paul come from. Yeah. Where I'm from, I just saw Marcus Gavi come from. Yeah. Where I'm from, I just saw Bonnie Wheeler come from. Yeah. Where I'm from. I did so much your band and come from, yeah. I say, well, it come up with all our water. It's a delight of food and water. Holy Papa, when I was a youngster, and after school, me jump in the river. But I go, flower and banana. Me have to share it with my friends and my neighbor. And it's no matter PNP or a labor. Talk to them, Mr. Nibs. <laughs> Where I'm from? I did so Miss Lou come from, yeah. Where I'm from, I did so Paul Wogle come from, yeah. Where I'm from, I did so Skill Cole come from, yeah. Where I'm from, I did so Grace Jones come from, yeah. Whoa, oh, oh, yeah. Jamaica we love. Jamaica we love, yeah, yeah, yeah. St. Thomas, pure niceness we promise from Portland right to St. Thomas, St. Mary to Chilani, to St. James, let me put right off to exchange. Nigga, we me serve for the West for the highest and the best from right to right back to Green Scale. Hope I'm a lot of girls that like a lava, St. Elizabeth up to Spur Tree Hill. Man, they will be for us when people adore us. Chapel and I'm for us, carrying down the tour bus. Hell shall be sure, put more for sure. Spanish town, I sent catching that train. And then me go to Irish town, Garden town, Jewel town, and Rose town. Circle to Valley Jungle, whole it's a real town. Rollington, and my town, Vineyard town, and Fun town. Downtown Kingston. Where I'm from, I did so the Maroons come from, yeah. Where I'm from, I did so run it to your scum from, yeah. Where I'm from, I did so early hunting come from, yeah. Where I'm from, I so Owen Juggler Nibs. So, what I want to know at this time is the, the, the business aspect of your career and what are you doing now <laughs> as opposed to before? Well, what am I doing right now? I have um, my own production company. Most of these songs you hear is produced by I, you know, Owen Nibs Music, you know. And I've created, released two albums, one online, the digital release, um, 2019. And last year I released the vinyl LP which is well overdue for 32 years. Because my fans, my supporters in Europe, if they don't have a vinyl to play, it's like they only play the juggler. So they were asking for it like, when are you going to release another vinyl? So I released that. We just released a, um, a seven inch from the album. If you don't, um, only Jaja, 
yeah, so those those are the things I'm doing right now. I'm producing other artists too. I just just released a song today with Santa Rankin. Brand new song. I haven't sent it to you yet, you know? Brand new song. So that's and I'm about to start promote some stage show now. And then just do the thing, you know? Yep. So what message would you like to tell the youths? If you can tell them anything, let me hear. What would you like to tell them? Well, I will tell you it's same thing I was telling my son today. My son is 16 now. And the conversation I would have to him is with him is just, just have love for, for, for everyone, you know? Don't be just don't be violent. Everything is not to fight. You know what I mean? The youth them just need to just respect and respect life, you know? And just love one another, man. Look out for one another. Like when we were youth and we used to cook together. Just like Leroy Smart said, we used to lick Charlie's cook idle stew together, play football and cricket. As one them song, brother. Them song they're not joking. You know? Them song they're very, very serious because that um, embedded kindness into you. And as you grow and become a man, it becomes your foundation to look out for the next brethren, even if you don't know him personally. And he, instead of trying to hurt him. So I would tell you, the man, just love one another, man. Simple. That's what I said. The word love can be overlooked because this conversation is going to be love, love, love. And it sounds so simple, like the man, they all him talk about a love. But it's the most important thing for anyone to have right now is love thy neighbors thyself. Everything that I'm gonna say for the you to do, the main ingredients is love. If you love everyone, I don't have to tell you nothing else. You know what I mean? Love, yes. I love the message. Love, love, love. yeah. Man. Love the stop message. Love. Stop fighting, stop hurting, when I stop grudging, man. You know, the you, um, you know, just get that. Don't stay and like I said, don't be a street side soldier. Don't stay on the corner and oh, the, the nothing now. Go on, life hard, life hard. But you have to get harder. You can't sit down and looking at the roof and cry. You have to go out there because I always tell my son, anything a man do, you can do it. It's not magic. You may burn with that with a little touch of the talent, but you have to work at uh, Usain Bolt is one of the fastest men of the world. You never get up one day and start run. You have to train while you're sleeping out. You practice 4 a.m. You have to you have to believe it, want it, and do it. Not to sit and complain. And then when it, when life come at you now, you realize say you have no income. Then you start to rob people and you want to kill the man who go work for it, the man who go doing construction, the man who put up a little shop. You want to take him life to take his income. What could be the outcome? You kill somebody's father. You kill another uh, um, king. So you, if you're not listening to our names right now, get back to love each other. That's all I have to say. Yeah, we, we have, <laughs> yes, we have to become our own resource. You know, we have that internal drive to come up with solutions. Even though sometimes we think it's a little struggle, sometimes we think it's hard, but if you just stop and allow yourself to think and come up with the options, because the options are always there, juggler, you know? And we have to make sure that we tell our youth and we're letting them, we also need to let them see how we're dealing with life as well. So that way they could pick up and, and be a sponge and gravitate and do the same thing. So um, I love the message that you just gave the youths, letting them know, you, you got this, you got this. And I do believe, all right, in my experience, grow, where I grow, where I grew, it was easy to be a bad man, you know, like teenager. But my, my mother, as I grew with my mother, Mama Grante, I love her so much, I respect her so much because Every time I'm about to stray, she wasn't having it, you know? She was the rock who said, no, Owen, them friends, they want me to see you with downtown. No, man, that's not it. So my mother would go, 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 go ask for a job for me and say, hey, I went to this place. 
go get a trade. She was on me. So I said, no, you know, I, I'm parents now need to, 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 to really be on their are your young one and try their best. Sometimes you can't stop them, but at least go the extra mile. Cause my mother, I'm, I'm, I'm in my fifties and I can't remember I have a physical fight. And where I'm from, every day there's a fight. But I'm the peacemaker. Give you know what I mean? For the peace. No, for real. If my street have beef for the other street, I could go over there and say, look, man, even as young as teenager playing football, man, I fight, man. I was the one who said, no, nah, man, my friend, them, yo, that, that man, this make me, I go do it. I said, no, Bridget. So I was the one who always a part of the fight. Give thanks. Give thanks. Yeah. You come to me fight, I find a way to defuse it because I know even as young, nothing good now gonna come out of this. Nothing good now come out of this. So I'm a natural peacemaker. And up to now, I, I haven't physically fight someone. I've never been in the position to defend myself to that extent. And I'm the youth who could go in a, any era. I go some places, my friend, them, yo, I now come down there with you, you know, because them Monday. But I'm going there and I'm welcome because the energy that I project, people say, who that? Man say, I stand. say, I'm cool, man. Come in. And my friend, them, no, man, I'm not coming down there, bridge. And man, they rare, rare, rare. Because them trouble people are road. I'm afraid I don't trouble no one. So I'm the peacemaker. Love we are dealing with. Give thanks for the peacemaker, um, Penny Vibe. She is the owner of Real Vibes Radio. And she says, peacemaker, yes, I. <laughs> and she said, spread love. Yeah, Ja love is, can you see? Ja love is inside of me, it's inside of you. Yes, it is. Universal. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> it's not. Only Jaja can save oh, us now. Only Jaja. Calling Jaja, begging you please. Calling Jaja, I'm down on my knees. Only Jaja can save us now. Only Jaja can save the world. Only Jaja can save us now. We keep the want to destroy your world. Oh yeah. They can never. We keep the want to destroy your earth. Oh yeah. As far as my eyes can see, these are the words of prophecy. Revelation time. Please don't be blind. Call up on Jah and beg him mankind. Yeah. Call on Jah. Yes, 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 yes. Owen, can I please hear an a cappella to this, please? Uh, Only Jaja can, oh, Jaja can save us now. Only Jaja can save the world. Yeah. We keep the one to destroy your world. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Mr. Oppressor trying to destroy your earth. As far as my eyes can see, these are the words of prophecy. Revelation time, please don't be blind. Calling Jaja and begging mankind. Yeah. Only Oh, Isla Fall, Isla Fall, your voice is like honey and sugar and everything nice. Give thanks. And your message, the most important thing, your message. It's a message for I and I 
to look at, to forward, you know? And it's just peace and love. And as I, as I told you from before, the, the music that you are creating, children could hear it, you know? If we're playing your music somewhere, and I know that children are around, I know that this is nothing about slackness. It's always about peace and love and uptonness. So give thanks for making sure that you are creating clean contents in your lyrics. Give thanks, Owen. <laughs> My duty, you know? Yeah, positive vibration. Bob Marley said it, positive vibration. You know, blast it across the nation. So that's what I, I'm about. I'm not about being popular. I'm about just doing, I'm a vehicle for the most side. Yes, love. And, yes, and, and we appreciate love you very, very much. Um, I want to say hey, I love to King Milo because it's true, King Milo, how I and I ended up connecting. I remember you were first featured on one of King Milo's segment, and I remember listening to you, and I was in awe when you were singing, and I think right after that, I text King Milo. I said, King Milo, who is this? I need a contact for him. And, you know, within days, we connected, and here we are, Owen. <laughs> yeah, <I did. laughs> the that's what I love. Music, positive vibration, connect people together, you know? So, yeah, man, big up Milo, man. I'm invited on the program. And, yeah, a lot, I met a lot of people through Milo. You know, Vaughn, Zal, Star, Jawai. Yeah, you know, Aital King. The, those people endorsed me when I first came out with the album, because those are vinyl people. So if you do right, just right. MP3, you're not going to connect with them. Because I know. I was surprised to know that there were so many people in the New York era that play vinyl. You know, not until I released the album and people start to buy it, inviting me to events. I'm like, what? So that's how we connect, you know. Big up, Milo. Yes, and here up Brooklyn, you know, that's the old stomping ground for me. East New York in the house, right? I was raised in uh, East New York, and yes, Brooklyn is the heart. Tonight, tonight as we speak with um, Vaughn's All Star, Earth Day Celebration. Yes, when you go, yeah. please hail up Vaughn for I. Tell him love, love, love. You want to know what I told him also? Um, the way I do up my thing here, you know, when I play a music, I say the name of the tune. When I was in Brooklyn, I, and I used to see how Vaughn All-Star, that's what he did all the time. And I remember I used to be in the dance, and I used to watch him, and I'm like, I like this because now I know who's singing the tune, you know, and I can go and look yeah. for them. So I always yeah, said... Yeah, man, big up bands. Yes. I was at ago, you know, put step of reggae. Yes, yes. Yeah. Love to Vaughn All Star and give thanks for his works. He's been in it forever and he continues to be co constant in what he does. And I love his vibe. So, Vaughn All Star, give thanks for your works as well. Respect, respect. Whoa. Never let you. I want to speak before I forget something. We were just speaking about parents um, talking to their kids, be forceful, you know. And I was bigging up my mother, Mama Granty, and this is her song. Because before you play the song, damn, this, this is an emotional moment. Because, all right, let me tell you about the song. Let me calm down a little bit. I went to the attorney to check one of his brethren. Nothing about music, but he's a producer too. But I'll just ride with him. And he was playing this beat in the background. And I said to him, as you know, this is not reggae. This is you know, R&B, whatever. So I said to him, I like that. So he said, oh, Juggler, you like, he's an American. I like the way he talks. was like, yeah, you like it, man? So I said, yeah. So I said, I, just, I don't know. And I'm not exaggerating on that line. Something just came over me and I get up, went into the boat, put on the headphone. Everything you heard now just came out. 
I took what he gave me and said, I'm going to write a song on combat. You know, like the demo. I see it as a demo. Went home, write something different from the same message, everything, but some nice words. And when I went back, nothing could happen. I couldn't connect. He said, what are you doing? He said, you have the song already. I, I said, what do you mean? He said, I save what you did. He said, what you're doing is rubbish. So th this is actually the song that I sung just as a demo. But the song is saying, you should never let your mama cry. As a young man, as even a young girl. And like I told you, as a youth, every now and then you try to stray bad man style, even to impress your friend or... And my mother saw me downtown one day as a young man, probably 19. And she saw me some friend, never, it never looked too good, you know? And when, when me and her eye connect, she, she held down her head. That means she was ashamed of me. And I felt it because I couldn't go and say, hi, mama. Because I watch her through the crowd in the street. And I, even though me and my friend was there, I was thinking about it like, Mama look really embarrassed. So when I went home the night, I knew I was going to get a scolding. And she was like, yo, what kind of friend those? You need to leave the street, go look at job. She was giving it to me. And I felt bad because she was crying. Because, you know, I'm her son. And she see what's going to happen. And the next morning when I woke up, you know, because I was really rough, beard up. You know, here, picky, picky. So I told her, all right, give me a bus fare. You know, buy me a suit. I'm going to go look at work. And I went look at work the same morning and got a job at a hotel. The same morning. And I never went back with, I mean, not like, you know, they're not my friends or whatever. But I didn't went back trying to go on the street again. So the song is saying, never let your mama cry. And I grew up around Rastafarians. And, you know, used to go down to Jati. Oh, Jati was always. We would say, boy, the man, I love preaching, man. But they realized those men were telling us the truth, to love, to not. The Rasta man was a peace man. That's why I'm so peaceful. Because I grew amongst Jati and the man who were just Steve. So this is what the song is about. Never let your mama cry. Thank you for playing. Whoa. You're welcome and give thanks for sharing your story with I and I. Dance on inside and I see them up on the outside. Never let your mama cry. Never let your mama die. When I was just a little boy, I used to live. Down the street, there was a Rasta man, he lived on the other side, and in his house is where the dread they meet. They would smoke and get so high, and they would talk about King Celestia. One day. I was passing by These are the words He said to I and I He said Never let my mama cry He said Never let my mama down He said Never let my mama down Oh I Oh yeah Never let my mama cry He said Never let my mama cry He said Never let my mama down Until the day my mama passed away I never, I never let her down He said go to school and be no fool And be the best in life you can And as a youth I never forget those words what the rest of men he said to I and I, he said, Never let my mama cry. 
He said, never let my mama cry. He said, never let my mama down. Whoa, I. He said, never let my mama cry. He said, never let my mama down. He said, never let my mama down. Whoa, I. Oh, yeah. Never let my mama cry. He said, never let my mama cry. He said, never let my mama down. Never let her cry Mama I'll never let you cry I love you mama Not because we're from the ghetto side of town I'll never let you die I'll never let her cry I'll never let you die My mama died. Never let my mama cry. I never let my mama cry. I never let my mama down. Whoa, I, I said, never let my mama cry. He said, never let my mama down. He said, never let my mama down. Whoa, I, oh yeah. Never let my mama cry. He said, never let my mama cry. He said, never let my mama down. Whoa, Greetings, greetings, Owen, Jagla, Nibs. Oh, first I want to say just give thanks once again, listening to the entire song. It, it was emotional, even just listening to it. I had to kind of like hold back the tears a little bit, to be honest. Um, so give thanks for creating this in honor of Mama and in honor of all the mothers throughout the world. Give thanks. So... This next song that I was playing, tell us about it. Uh oh, I'm not hearing you. I'm not hearing you. Go on. Why can't they unite? Smoke in a spliff down. If I'm a call the... Go on. No. Them took I away. Jerry, I don't have own space. Whoa, yeah. For a little spliff down. Yep, yep. Yes. Greetings. Greetings, yes. Better give thanks. Yes. All right. Turtle Greenish Road is the name of the song. That's the address of the tenement yard. So I wrote this song, not the complete song, but I have the experience in um, 1993. Of, um, I, used to, I didn't live there, but I used to stay in the yard, you know, when I go to Kingston. Rest in peace, Donna. I used to go there and stay with her, you know? And I, I was born in a somewhat tenement yard in, in Montego Bay. 
where there was like four houses on the property, but there was no fence or anything, and people share bathroom, and you know that whole ghetto thing there. So they were, you know, those wrote was happening in there. The day that I started to write the song was some dog, some dog tried to bite me up. You know, I go in there, dog, rrr, rrr, and I said, "Boy, the tenement here, they're rough, you know, man." <laughs> so, so I said. You know, we just uh, scratch something on a little paper. So it was not until um, I recorded the song in Paris for a bridge in the um, Bend Up Station. So last year was when he played me the beat, all I could hear was, Can I hold a meditation in a tenement yard? And I said, Wow, thank you, Ja. Here comes the rhythm. Now I could get to sing the song. So I recorded it and why wow, people loving it. Robert Up style. Nice and boom. <laughs> and um, big up the bridge in Quark every time. And I musical partner, Diamond Mind, who make it happen. Because let me make this before we leave and I forget that people see Owen Nibs, but it's a big team. You know, like a soccer team, you have the number 10, and he scored the goal, he get the glory. Yes. But coach. You have the goalie, you have the defense, you have the link man. You have the man who passed the ball to him and him score it. So this is the team. So big up on your team, you know? Yes. You big show. Yes, yes, <laughs> yes. You know, um, Owen Juggler, CC Flavor had an emergency. So, but she just wanted to say, give thanks. And it was an honor to have you on here. She says, love you. And she love her. Yes, and you know, she looks forward to I and I connecting even more. So she just wanted me to make sure and let you know of that. Thank her. Yeah, <laughs> yes, and everyone who's logged on Facebook, I see Priest Frank, Strong Joe Corbin, Jay, I should say JB International. We have Gambia in the house. We have Guadalupe. We have Virginia. We have Jamaica. I mean, so many of you, Trinidad and Tobago. I see you all, and even on our Mixcloud page, I see you all select our roast, the breadfruit, give thanks for the I and, and your works as well, and always helping I and everyone, all the singers and the players of instruments, everyone behind the scenes, give thanks. Um, Owen Juggler Nibs, it was an honor and it was a pleasure having you on here and just telling us your, your, your life journey and, and your music. But one thing, one thing, one thing before, we go and before I play this, also, what is next for Owen Juggler Nibs? And if people need to reach you, can you please share your contact information? Well, my contact is anywhere online. And it's, I'm, I'm on um, Instagram, I'm on um, Facebook, I'm on um, this new thing. What do you, uh, what do you call it? Um, is it TikTok? I'm a, or TikTok. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> they could connect with I. It's just always is right across the board, you know? Yeah. Uh, um, my phone number, which is the office number, is 347 290 4643. You call that number and get to the, the management. Oh, wait, uh, wait. Say, it, say it slow one more time, just to make sure that people can get it correctly. 347 290 Four six four three. Give thanks. And then email is realjuggling at yahoo.com. You know, so those, I'm easy to find. I'm here. Yes, yes. I, yes. Touch with you, get in touch with you. Yes, yes, and I'll make sure and give you the link. And you're on yeah, all major social media platform, for, you know, and everybody, please. Everybody, please. Go on. No, what? <laughs> No, I said I'm major, no minor, so I'm all, all, all on the major. You are in the oh, major. Uh, uh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and, I'm, and I'm no stranger. <laughs> no, not at all, not at all. And tell us, what's next for Owen? What's next? You know what? If somebody said, what you plan for the future? This is my future. Right. Okay. What's next? What next is today? You know what I mean? Because if, you know, if I was 19, I would tell you, you know, 20 years from now, but right now, everything is now. Everything is now. So I'm just 
begging just to keep on your life. Tomorrow I could wake up and continue my work. True. That's all I have. It's health and strength. The breath of life. And good people around. And just be happy. True. I mean, yeah, so. True. That's my next move. If you oh. wake up tomorrow, get back to it. <laughs> yes, you know, my mom always says, give thanks for life, right? So having yep. the opportunity, you know, we are above. Icong always says, I'm above ground, above, right? So just give thanks that we are here and we're doing the works. We're spreading positivity. We're making connections and we're healing. We're healing each and every single one of us as we make the connection. Um, so, Owen Jucklinibs, give thanks for the opportunity in, in you allowing Alkebula and Empress Sounds on Real Vibes Radio, allowing us to interview you, to learn about you, your, your, your journey, yes, your journey and your history and uh, your purpose in, in music. <laughs> yes, your purpose. That is it. Yes, your, it, your purpose. It's an honor because when I listen to music you play, and the vibration you send out. I know you don't joke. Aww. You know? I know that you I could sit and listen to you four hours. That is just nice reggae music, rubber dub style, positive vibration. Yeah. You transcend into the air. So yeah. being on your program, I'm honored. But I know I'm chosen and it's not like you know, I'm just end up on your program. I know, you know, I was assessed, I was you look into music, you look at the man himself. I know I'm worthy. You know what I mean? So I do give thanks, appreciate love, the, the opportunity to represent my music and my team. I love my team, man, because they make it good. Yes, <laughs> <laughs> yes. And, and you know, um, each one strengthens one, right? So I, I and I are one, and we're doing this together. So give thanks, Owen Juggler Nibs. It was an honor as well, and it was a pleasure to have you on Real Vibes Radio. Yeah, man, Real Vibes. Keep it alive, you know. <laughs> I can be impressed. Play them in a robot of style. <laughs> Don't worry, I go play them. I go play it for them, you know. Don't worry, I go play yeah. it for them. Don't worry. <laughs> so, shout out to all Owen Nip supporters worldwide, all over the world, all my new Fans, all the people who are buying the record, the vinyl, the CD, the album. Thank you all. You know, I really appreciate love that. The music I love, people love it too. True. Big up Mr. Michael Palmer, Shine, Dougsy, all of them man who joined the, the combination who think I'm worthy to put my voice with there, you know. Nice. The man at Kwaku, who for eight years, every day into the music. No bad vibes, I just love Diamond Mind, Mike, Mosa International. We don't want to start the name, you know, I'm too much. <laughs> too much name to call, right? But all of them, how about that? Every single I, one of them. <laughs> every single one who play a part in this Owen Nibs movement and yeah. love, you know. Yeah. Thank you, CC Flavor. I'm big up the team. See? Yes. Much love. Much love. Jalo love. Respect. All the time. Love, my brother. Love. All right, one. Spliff them in form of call the police. Them took I away, carry I down her own space. Whoa, yeah. For a little spliff day. Yeah, yeah. She a whole of meditation in a tenement. Baby, don't impress. Lay in the robot.
interview we want to tell everybody make sure to continue supporting all of INI DJs throughout the strong we have on Mondays Darn Carlos Tuesdays Ras Randy with Nika Sound System on Wednesdays Platinum Tipper on Thursdays Ras Nick on Fridays Reganair with Nika Sound System and then on Saturdays we have two shows Hallie Man Sounds and yours truly Al Kebilan Empress Sounds with CC Flavor and Empress Aishiba and then on Sundays, we have two shows, DJ Digo and Dookie the Endorser. I want to tell everybody on Facebook, I see you, Joel Williams, Judah Diamond, Trinidad and Tobago, D-Star, my sister, Kathy, I see you. We have Dorothy, we used to go to school together, love my sister. King Milo, all-purpose sound, Priest Frank, 
South Carolina, we got Strong Joe Corbin. Virginia, JB International. We have the Reggae Bubblers from St. Croix USBI. We have Adenike from Gambia. Asalia Gad, Guadalupe in the house. Ashley, Virginia, Big Virginia, Mr. King, Benton, Marie James. You know what? I saw this sister for the first time today in the grocery store. Love to the Ion family, sister. Michael Young, Trinidad and Tobago. I see you, CC Flavor, Jar Guidance and Protection, sending love to the I and family. DC Ninja, I see you, Bevelyn Campbell. Oh my, just give thanks everyone on our Mixed Cloud Selector, Rose, Breadfruit, Haitian Fire, Empress, Isis, love to the I and family. Just wanna say give thanks, Penny Vibes, Penny Vibes, give thanks everyone. I send love and light to each and every household. Give thanks for always supporting Real Vibes Radio. Give thanks for always supporting our Kevilam Empress Sounds. Until such Iowa, next Saturday, uh, 5 o'clock Atlantic Standard Time, we have our brother from South Africa. We're going to be interviewing him, um, uh, Maverick. Um, Maro all the way once again from South Africa so make sure you are tuned in and uh, through the power of the most high next time love and light to each and every household DJ Caribbean Queen St. Thomas in the house Love you all. Yes, give thanks. What a show, right? Give thanks.